Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video I'm super excited to tell you all about scroll animations in Framer, a brand new feature. We're bringing the magic of Framer Motion to the Framer app, allowing you to do so much more. So let's have a look at this demo project to explore what is now possible with scroll animations. I'll start by going over how this web page is currently set up. So here we have a top bar that is fixed to the top of the viewport. Below it, we have a header that spans the entire height of the viewport. And right below that, we have a few sections, each with a unique section name. This used to be called scroll target, and we now call it scroll section. We've renamed this because you can now do more with this than just target specific sections to scroll to. We also made sure that these are now reflected in the layer panel, making it easy to identify which layers you've given a unique section name. For example, here we have a features section. Right below that, we have the feature dash grid section. The yellow section is called bundle and the final section is called specs. So that's pretty much what we have so far. Let's also go ahead and give this a little preview. So we have our top bar that's fixed to the top of the screen. And then we have our header here that occupies the full viewport height. And then we have our sections below. Now for landing pages like these, you often might want to do something with your navigation when scrolling past or within a certain section, like show or hide it, animate it, or even change the tint and link colors. For this page, it would be lovely if our top bar turned into a yellow variant in the yellow section and a darker variant in the final section. So in this component, I have already set up three variants for each of these sections light, dark, and yellow. And I'll show you how we can switch between these within a specific section in a little bit. But there are more cool things we can do with our top bar. We could also hide it initially and only slide it into view as we scroll past onto the banner below the header. So let's give this a try. With the top bar selected, I can head over to the effects panel in the property panel and I'll click on appear animation. Now an appear animation will trigger on page load as it says over here, which is not really what we're after. We are looking for the trigger section in view, which will trigger an animation as we scroll past a certain section. The section right below the header is called banner and we can select that as the section, as that is the point from which we would like to bring back our top bar. I would like to trigger this animation as soon as the top part of the banner is in view. So the start property here is set correctly. I also want to make sure that if we scroll back up, the navigation is once again hidden. So I want to go ahead and set replay to yes. Here we could pick a preset, I'll select slide in top. And then right below that, we could customize the enter and the exit animations. This works the same as the other effects do in Framer, which you might have already used before. I'll set opacity to one and offset Y to minus 80, which is the height of our top bar. And this will make sure we position it off screen by default. I'll also make the spring animation a little bit slower. So our top bar is now correctly initially hidden. However, we also want to make sure that the top bar stays visible as we scroll past the banner and onto the features section. So we don't need an exit effect and I can click on the X to delete it. Now let's give this a preview to see what we have made so far. So our top bar is correctly hidden from view. And as soon as we scroll past the banner, it nicely animates into view. And if we scroll back up, it will once again hide. And that is the replay property at work. And as we scroll further down below the banner, the top bar stays in view, 
and this is because we removed the exit animation. So this is really nice and we can now continue with the variants. So with the top bar selected, I'll click on effects and select scroll variant. We once again want to select section in view as the trigger as we want to switch variants within specific sections. The scroll variant effect allows us to select a variant to animate to. The section right below the banner is called features, but it matches the light theme of our top bar. So we don't want to switch to this one just yet. Instead, we want to go ahead and select the bundle section, which is the yellow section. And from here, we can set the variant to be yellow. And this might be another good time to give our web page a little preview. I'll scroll down a bit. As we scroll past the banner, the navigation bar appears. And as we scroll past the bundle, it turns yellow. This is great, but as we scroll onto the specs section, we also kind of wanted to switch to a darker variant again, as there the yellow version is a bit much. As a reminder, we have the yellow section here, which is called bundle. And then right below that, we have the darker section, which is called specs. So how do we add this extra variant switch? I'll reselect the top bar and I'll go back to the scroll variant effect. And in this pop out, you might have noticed there's a button called add section. This allows us to add another section and to define another variant to switch to, allowing us to create little sequences. So I'll select the specs section and the dark variant. So we have now created a little sequence. Our top bar starts out in the light variant. As we scroll past the bundle section, it switches to yellow. And then as we scroll from the bundle section onto the specs section, it will switch to the dark variant. Now it's time to give this another preview. Our top bar slides in, turns yellow, and then it turns dark. So this is great. And we have now created a fully functional sequence using scroll animations and scroll variants. These new features are fully compatible with smooth scrolling as well. So let me add some links to show you. I'll select the features text layer, add a link, point it to the home page, and then I'll select the features section and I'll set scroll to smooth. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other layers here. I'll point this one to bundle and I'll point the final one to specs. With all links in place, let's go back to the home page and give it another preview. And now if I click on the links, it will smoothly scroll to the specific section and it will also still nicely animate the top bar to the matching variants. So this is quite lovely. Now you might have noticed that the top bar switches when the bottom of the top bar hits the top of the section. And this is also where our links smoothly scroll to. This was achieved by setting offset Y to 80 pixels in each scroll section. And again, 80 pixels is the height of the top bar. So now the offset Y property not only allows you to add an offset to the scrolling position, it's also now taken into account if you use scroll animations like scroll variant, where it impacts when to switch. So we make sure that these two are always in sync, giving you full control. Finally, let's also make sure our CTA here scrolls you to the next section. I'll add a link and I'll point it to the features section with scroll set to smooth. And if we now give this a preview, 
clicking the learn more link now smoothly scrolls us to the features section as the navigation bar also slides into view very nice there is one final use case i want to show you and that is in this little features grid i have this feature video component with two variants one where the video is paused and another where the video is playing. Prior to this release, you could only add scroll effects as the layers themselves scrolled into view. But oftentimes you want more control. Like here, on larger displays, the video is already visible as soon as the grid scrolls into view. So really, we want to tell Framer, hey, start playing this video as soon as the feature grid is in view. And this is now possible. I'll add a scroll variant effect to the feature video and I'll select the section in view trigger. I'll select the feature grid as the section and we'll switch to the playing variant. We can then add another section to set the video back to paused as we scroll onto the bundle section. This makes sure the video is only playing when we can actually see it. And that's all there is to it. We can now give this a preview to see how this works. I'll slowly scroll towards the section. So now as we can see the video is still paused because we haven't hit the feature grid. And as soon as we hit the feature grid the video starts playing. As we scroll to the bundle section now the video is paused which should help with performance. And as soon as we scroll back up, the video is once again playing. And this also works with our smooth scrolling links. This is great as it allows you to control the viewing experience of your content to make sure that it's consistent for every user of your website, no matter how much time they've spent looking at your header, for example. Everyone will see the video right from the start. That's pretty much it for this video. This release allows you to do so much more with effects in Framer and we're very excited to share it with you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more updates coming soon.